Welcome to Distributed Operating System. I, Professor Khan, will be taking today components of load distribution algorithm, which is our Unit 5 under Distributed Scheduling. Let us try to understand what exactly is the distributed environment. When we talk about distributed environment, it has autonomous computers, multiple thousands of autonomous computers, computers connected into LAN which gives us tremendous processing capacity. Each of these computers have their own memory. However, to realize this capacity and to take full advantage of it, good resource allocation schemas are needed. Unless and until we don't have good resource allocation, since because in distributed environment, the resources are limited, we need to share the resources. Though every computer has their own memory, but the resources are limited so for this reason we need resource allocation which is done by a distributed scheduler this is a scheduler which will manage the resource component into a distributed operating system the scheduler focuses on transparently redistributing the load of the system among the computer such that overall performance of the system is maximized as we already know the distributed system works well with local area network as in wide area network the communication delay are very high as discussed shortly we already know what is uh, the distributed environment here the user submit tasks at their host computer for processing the random arrival of tasks in such an environment can cause some computers to be heavily loaded while the other computers are idle or are likely loaded so this is nothing but the load distribution what is the task of the scheduler the task of the scheduler here comes into picture when it has to distribute the load amongst all those thousands and thousands of nodes whoever has high load lighter than load whoever has low load or are idle give them some task to execute in order to utilize the complete uh, capacity of the distributed environment now we'll come to the main uh, point of our uh, topic discussion today which is the component of load distribution kindly note we are talking about the dynamic load distribution algorithm years here so into the load distribution algorithm we have four important components which are called as the policies they are transfer selection location and information policies so please remember whenever in future we study we see the load distribution algorithm into all these algorithm these four policies are must without these policies we cannot mention any of the load distribution algorithm that's why this topic is a prerequisite for studying any load distribution algorithm let's go one by one and try to understand these the very first one which is the transfer policy what exactly is this transfer policy and what it does and now to explain this to you into very so, uh, small and uh, simple terms transfer policy is a policy which decides among these thousands of nodes thousand and thousands of nodes into our distributed environment which node shall be called as a sender and which node shall be called as a receiver now how does this transfer policy decide this this decide this on a threshold policy what is a threshold here threshold is nothing but load see understand we are into distributed scheduler and what we are scheduling here is load distribution that which node will have what type of load which is having what load so what is a threshold here is nothing but the load here so depending upon the load if a node has threshold that means load above the threshold t then that is the sender and if a node falls below the threshold t then it is a receiver below means it does not it has less load and above means it has more load so this is how we decide who is the sender who is the receiver who is the receiver who has less load so i can take more load so i will be the receiver who is the sender when i have more load i already have load beyond my capacity beyond my threshold so i'll be the center 
then an alternative transfer policy initiate task transfer whenever an imbalance in load among nodes is detected because of the action of the information policy shortly we'll see what exactly is this information policy and next component into load distribution is selection policy what it does this selection policy selects a task for transfer now as we understand who sender who is receiver now what we have to do is we have to transfer the task from who from sender to the receiver so this is the task of the selection policy to transfer the task from the sender to the receiver now if the selection policy fails to find a suitable task to transfer the node is no longer considered a sender until the transfer policy decides that the node is a sender again so please understand the selection policy comes after the transfer policy why because in transfer policy it decides who is the sender and who is the receiver only once it is the dis only once it is decided who is the sender that means i am highly loaded heavily loaded then only we can decide who who are remaining are the receiver or automatically we know that these are the receivers so what we have to do ultimately we have to transfer task from the sender to the receiver so this is the task of the selection policy the simplest approach is to select newly originated tasks that has caused the node to become a sender by increasing the load at the node beyond the threshold such tasks are relatively cheap to transfer at the trans as the transfer is non primitive a basic criteria that a task selection or transfer should satisfy is that the overhead incurred in the, in the transfer of the task should be compensated for the reduction in the response time realized by the task in general long lived tasks satisfy this particular condition also a task can be selected for remote execution if the estimated average execution time for that type of task is greater than some execution threshold there are other factors also while we uh, consider the selection of a task first is the overhead incurred by the transfer should be minimal second is the number of location dependent system calls made by the selected task should be minimal so overhead that means we need minimum delays here we should not the sender or the receiver should not wait long for those tasks to come in and the second is location dependency system call should be minimum what is location dependency location dependency means if i am the sender i have certain tasks and i want those tasks to be pro, uh, to be performed on certain application or certain platforms which is only available into say x x x location or x node then that means this particular task cannot be performed by anyone it has to be performed by that particular specific node only which has that particular application that environment or those resources so that is nothing but the location dependency so we need to have minimum location dependency and minimum delay next is the location policy this policy is responsible to find suitable node to share load because now we know what are senders and what are receivers so how does they find that who is suitable for load sharing so what they do is they have two method here by polling they take a poll or by broadcasting a query how does we'll see the second one first broadcasting the query is that is they broadcast a query to find out if any node is available for the load distribution or not and for polling how does they do it a node polls another node to find out whether it is suitable node for load sharing node can be polled either serially or in parallel fashion a node can be selected for polling either randomly that is based on the information collected during the previous poll or the nearest neighbor when i say nearest neighbor here means just a peer adjacent to my node or i can take the polling from the previous poll the last uh, policy here is the information policy information policy is responsible for design deciding when where and what information should, should be collected and how often they should be collected again they have three types that is demand driven periodic state change policy and we will see them one by one what exactly is demand driven in demand driven policy what happens is a node collects the state of another node 
only when it becomes either a sender or a receiver, making it suitable candidate to initiate the load sharing. We understand this. If I'm a sender, then only I can give away my load. And if I'm a receiver, then only I'm capable of taking additional load. Okay. Now, in, uh, demand driven policies are always a dynamic policies. These policies uh, are again of three types that is, sender initiated, receiver initiated, and symmetric initiated. Now, let's see what are these uh, policies in short. When we talk about sender initiated, the sender looks for receiver to transfer their loads. When a receiver initiated policy, receiver, I solicitate. A load from sender that means when i'm talking about sender initiated the sender will say see i got lots of load please share my load when we talk about receiver initiated uh, policy in that receiver will say see since i am the receiver i got less load please give me some load and when we are talking about symmetric initiated policy it's a combo of both the type uh, sender and receiver the load sharing actions are triggered by demand for extra processing power or extra work. Next is periodic. In this class of policy, node exchange uh, load information periodically. Based on the information collected, the transfer policy at a node may decide to transfer their jobs. Periodic information policy do not adapt their activities to the system state. What is the state we have already seen into previous topic. For example, the benefit due to load distribution are minimal at high system load because most of the nodes in the system are already busy. So, we cannot uh, take, uh, you know, often updation on to this particular information. But nevertheless, the overhead due to periodic information collection continues to increase the system load and thus worsen the situation. So, this is highly not recommended to go for a periodic information policy. In need, we can go for demand, in demand or a state change policy. The last category into this information policy is the state change driven. This class of policy, the node disseminates state information whenever the state changes by certain degree. What do you understand when I say uh, changes with, with certain degree? This means if at this particular instant I am the sender and at next instant I can become receiver. Why? Because maybe I have shared my load or maybe because I have executed my task. So my load is now below the threshold. So I can become the receiver now. That is called as the state change driven. A state change driven policy differ from a de demand driven policy. In that, it disseminate information about the state of a node rather than collecting the information about the other node that we understand. Now, again, state change are of two types, centralized and decentralized. In centralized category, nodes send state information to a centralized connection point. That is, to a central point, the complete information is transferred. And whereas in decentralized a policy, the nodes send information to its peer, only to the neighbor so uh, these were that was all about the components of load distribution algorithm and uh, those were uh, those were these uh, four type that we have seen transfer selection transfer selection location information policy we have seen these so these all four policies will go hand in hand as i told you without these four policy we cannot uh, you know um, implement any of the load distribution algorithm that's why i took this particular slide into my this presentation just to elaborate to you that if i want to implement either of these algorithms which are the load distribution algorithm either the sender one receiver symmetric or adaptive algorithm before telling the working of these algorithm i have to mention what are the components of load distribution algorithm that is what are the transfer selection location and information policies of all these so before writing these algorithm we have to write down its policy so in next class we'll see what is load distribution algorithm for now i hope you have understood what are the various components of load distribution algorithm which were very easy and interesting i hope you have enjoyed this particular lecture and it was an engaging lecture thank you so much